Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. I'm doing this poem as part of a contest, so you're gonna watch me live as I go through my thoughts as I'm coding. Uh, there'll be an explanation near the end, and for more context, there'll be a link below on the actual screencast of the contest. Uh, how did you do? Let me know how you do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and here we go. Fingers crossed. But uh, it seems good, so on to the last one. Cave Ancestor of a Tree Node. So, yeah, uh, Q4, this is, I, I, I don't know what, uh, so a lot of people, when I refreshed, six people already got accepted. So well done to, to those six people. I was way, um, you know, this is only 10 minutes into the uh, contest. Uh, I was like, wow, is there something I'm missing? Do I, um, because for me, I, I, I don't know if this is a known problem or seen problem, and you know, I'll leave a comment later below, and I, I'll explain how I solved this later. Um, but for now, I actually knew when, I, when as soon as I saw this kind of, uh, problem, I was like, okay, um, it's it. Some of this is meta, but it's a Q four on the code which I've had practice on. This is it's a quote unquote hard problem, and for a hard problem, you probably can't brute force. Um, and by brute force, I mean an n square query that goes up, right? Like if each query takes all of n time, that's too slow. So immediately my I, my dot process jumped to finding a log n process uh, where n is, you know, five times 10 to the fourth, uh, and that would be fast enough. So I was just thinking about, well, um, and this is something that actually reminds me a little bit of, of uh, the RMQ algorithm. I was thinking not specific to that, but that kind of technique where uh, well, we need to fit something in log n. So instead of storing, um, you know, in a naive way, maybe you could store the distances as like, okay, for each node, store the first ancestor, the second ancestor, the third ancestor, and so forth, right? And for if you have n nodes and you have a, um, a degenerate case of you send you a linked list where one points to zero, two points to one, and so forth, um, you know, that's going to be n squared. So those are the things that I'm thinking about and in this problem. Um, so I knew how to do this problem immediately-ish, but it's the first time I've implemented something like this, so I was really thinking through. And to be honest, I was just thinking, wow, people have solved it really quickly. Is there a stupider way? Is there an easier way? Uh, is there a more obvious way? Or am I doing, like, you know, more work than it's for? Uh, I didn't really think. I didn't. I couldn't find one. So, I mean, that's not to say there isn't, but I couldn't find one during the contest while I was solving this. So, yeah. So, the idea behind what I later um, end up doing for this problem is just instead of storing the first ancestor, the second ancestor, the third ancestor, and so forth, we stored the first ancestor, the second ancestor, the fourth ancestor, the eighth ancestor, and so forth. So, basi so basically, we store the powers of two ancestors away. And from that... Because there are at most log n powers of two ancestors, uh, everything will be log n-ish. Uh, I do a more in-depth uh, explanation and analysis of this later on in the com um, uh, in the explanation section. Uh, but yeah, but basically that's th all those things that I talked about are the things that I talk uh, I was thinking about now, and I was just like, you know. Um, and now I'm mostly thinking about the implementation detail because I don't, I haven't done this before or, or maybe I've done it before, but I've done it like decades ago. Like maybe the last time I've done this technique was 10 plus years ago, uh, not even exaggerating. And that time I didn't do it in Python. So the, so here what you're seeing is me trying to figure out from scratch, how do I imp implement this? What is the right approach? How do I get this? in a cool, fast way. Um, and this is also what uh, practice would get you, is that uh, you... Uh, um, yeah. So basically here I was just thinking about the techniques and I was like, okay, well, um, yeah, uh, because I haven't done it in Python before. I was like, okay, I don't know the right way to do it. So that's just, you know, this is something that, as I was saying, um, if you have practice, then you have, 
know how to do it. And on the other problems, I practice similar things uh, so to to get the speed that you see. Um, and of course, if you just check out this problem, there's a, a link to the entire contest below. Uh, and I was just like, okay, let's just do everything in the hash table, right? Uh, but yeah. But basically, um, some of this is because I haven't, I don't know, uh, familiar with this part of the Python. Uh, so I was trying to think, uh, how do I do basically, um, essentially like a two dimensional, uh, array, but with hash tables, right? So I just wasn't sure about the syntax. And that's also what something that if you practice, if you, uh, done it before, you'll know how to do without like needing to want to see if it compiles. Um, but yeah, but now I was just basically, okay, let's go through creating the, well, let's start like from what we said, um, and I'm trying to, uh, start from first principles of, okay, well, one distance away or one ancestor away is just a parent, right? And then that's what I, I, uh, imp that's what I put here, uh, though I was, as you can see, struggling a little bit, um. And yeah, and I, like I said, I haven't done this in like a decade. So I'm just trying to think about what's the best way to implement this. And you could see that uh, I'm typing very slowly. But um, yeah, and for this problem, I wasn't sure how far up you may need to go. Wow. So. I think I definitely did not implement this uh, looking now. Uh, I didn't implement this in the most uh, code efficient way um, in terms of, you know, just practicing it, but. But basically, um, and it, Turned out to be a little bit of um, of a dynamic programming the way that I did it, but uh, it's very basic dynamic programming, I guess. But basically, the idea is that um, you know, for each node, what is two distance away? Well, it is one distance away, and then that ancestor, that ancestor, is one distance away. So that's the two distance away. How do you get four distance away? Well, it's my grandparent. Uh, my grandparents' grandparents, which is another way of saying it's my two distance away, two distance away, and then, and then kind of re doing it that way. That's how I construct. Um, that's pretty much how I construct the list, um, or construct the lookup. And I don't know why I just one instead. But... And again, uh, the. The uh, lack of familiarity means that I actually did have, uh, like my base case wasn't quite correct. Uh, so yeah, I probably could have just changed the default dictionary to be honest, but maybe that should be okay. Hmm. But, um, but yeah, now I wanted one time issue ever. So again, uh, because I have not done this, I am not familiar with it. And some of the syntax is a little bit different. Um, I wasn't sure what is the part that is wrong. 
uh, and that's why I had to run the code just to see for myself uh, whether my syntax is kind of makes sense. Um, and that's where practice will uh, get you. I, I know that I talk a lot about practice, and I mean it earnestly. That um, you know, if you want to be fast, if you want to be good, if you want to be able to solve these, a lot of of it is just practice, practice, practice. Uh, and of course, you have to learn the fundamentals so that you know you know what you're learning. It's not just like you know typing, um, but you know, with that said, if you learn the fundamentals in a good way, even without practice, right? You see me doing this, and you, I am struggling a little bit, uh, to be honest. But you know, but I, I'm able to solve the problem, right? Um, maybe I'm not as fast as the people who did it in like three, five minutes, three to five minutes. Uh, but you know, like I'm not. Um, no, it's not a what you call it either. Right? Like it's not impossible for me, so I'm happy about that. Um, so even though this one uh, I didn't do super well on this problem, um, you know, I can't complain. I I did make a silly mistake that I, you know, uh, that I think I was just a little bit careless about. I think I thought about it, and we'll talk about it when it comes up. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, now I'm just putting out for debugging. I'm like, oh, my, um, I'm, it's still a lot of zeros. So that means that, like I said, I should have just changed the default value to be negative one. I think that's what I should have done. But, um, but it was just like weird stuff this way. Uh, and I spent way too much time debugging this. Uh, but some of that is, you know, the learning process and me just thinking about it. Um, cause if you if you look if you watch me now and if you're still watching uh instead of fast forwarding to the explanation um you know everything i do here um okay maybe not next time maybe i still make a, the same mistake next time with respect to implementation but you know eventually i will learn and i'm excited about that i'm happy about that um and you know what you see now and what i'm printing a uh, discovery of um how to go about this problem because i really don't know how to solve, or not don't know, but I don't, I have not implemented this before, um, at least not in uh, 10 years, 10 plus years. So it is definitely something that I'm happy and proud that, um, that just with an idea of binary numbers that I could um, solve this problem. Uh, and it also beats just like solving dynamic programming problems the entire time. Cause it seems like that's all the things recently. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for the pre-processing. Now we have to get the ancestor. I was like, okay, that looks reasonably good enough for me to move on. I don't know if it's right, but it's enough for me to move on. Um, and I think some of, of why I did get a wrong answer is because of my unfamiliarity with this uh, algorithm and how to push it in a way that... Um, because I was worrying about space, I was worrying about time. So those were the two things that are on my the top of my head. Um, and and when you practice these things, you get more confident about uh, certain constraints and stuff like that. In terms of complexity, it, it should be good enough. But I was worried about space a little bit as well. Uh, do I think, that looking back, I shouldn't have? Um, because then I could have just uh, handled the edge case in a more uh, cleaner way if I had just done that. Um, but yeah, the idea behind the get cave ancestor, the query, is basically just take the biggest power of two, uh, remove it, and then um, and then keep going. And you know, basically, for example, and I explain this later on. But if you have say fifteen, you take eight, which is the biggest power of two that is less than fifteen, and then you keep. That's what I essentially do. Um, and then you just go move, uh, you know. That, that number of nodes ahead. Um, and because you are at most going to make log k of these jumps, I uh, want in log k time. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one into some uh, was I forgot a base case, which is like. Yeah, so this looks good. I was like, okay, um, what should I test for? I really should have tested for one more case besides submit. Uh, but again, I was really worried about uh, timing out more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, thought that would be fast enough. And log in. And I did actually get a wrong answer. So I was like, huh, okay. Um, I I made a critical uh, meta mistake here because I clicked on more details. It didn't tell me any more details. What a rip off. And, and the problem now is that uh, I did copy and paste no, that uh, test case. That's uh, I did copy the test case, but I don't know what's wrong about it because I didn't get to compare. So I had to take some time to manually create the answer uh, key for this one, which was a race of a couple of minutes. Um, but yeah, but the short answer is that uh, I did not... Um, it was just an off by something because I didn't go all the way. So at, it gets stuck on certain nodes because I just keep on recursing on those instead of um, uh, double checking that if node is negative one because of how I did default uh, dictionary, if it goes to negative one, it goes back to zero because the default value is zero. That is a really stupid thing that I got. I, you know, I, I, I should have just converted the default value to negative one and that would have been okay. Um, but, but yeah, I just added an if statement and that fixes it. But yeah, that's all I have with this problem. It's, uh, like I said, it's the first time I've seen this, uh, even though I have played with around with, um, like, I mean, I know enough about how to do this. So I was able to do it from scratch, uh, never seen this, never practiced this. So I feel really happy that I was able to solve this. Uh, my contest ranking or rating will suffer, but that's okay. The first time you do anything, it's going to be hard to do it really quickly. But yeah, that's all I have. Uh, to hang out with the other Larry, and you know, I hope you had a good contest. Uh... <laughs> Okay, I mean, not bad for something that I honestly created uh, by myself. Q4. Um, so the way that I did it, I don't know how other people did it because people did it really fast, almost like people know how to do it already. I did not. I am proud of myself, even though uh, I took about 20 minutes to solve this problem. I actually knew how I wanted to do this immediately, but I don't know how to implement it. Uh, so maybe it's that, maybe it's a known problem, maybe people have been practicing. I'm not trying to make excuses, but I'm trying to understand the problem in a way that uh, without seeing how other people did it, I'm just amazed because this is the, but some of that may be just that I, this is the first time I've seen it. Uh, and, and you know, the, the, you're gonna to have to. Uh, sometimes you have to, you know, solve problems that you haven't seen before, and that's okay. Uh, and that's where, uh, you know, you hope your knowledge and your uh, practice carries through, and your techniques and your and what you've learned. Right uh, from here, um, 
So the first thing that I, 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 well, I think there was just a lot of reading. I wasn't sure what it meant. Um, and then after that, I looked at constraints. Constraints is such that, um, okay, if you have, you know, the, the, um, the edge case or the, the big long case would be like you send you a linked list, right? You have one point or zero pointing to one or the other way around, one pointing to zero, two pointing to one, so forth. So you have a huge linked list. And if you do something naive, uh, you that may be easily be n square. Uh, so what I did was I ha I knew how to do this immediately uh, in terms of algorithm, but implementation definitely is something that people need to practice on, especially on a language that they may not have done it on. Uh, and from here, uh, looking at the n, uh, which is five times 10 to the fourth, I knew immediately that uh, I needed something log n, uh, n log n, sorry, where that, or q log n, because so, if you times q times n, I mean, in this case, n is equal to q, so it's easy to confuse them. But, but um, yeah, if you do something that q times n, well, that's going to be way too, too big, right? It's like 25 times 10 to the eighth, and that's way too big. Um, so we need to get something that, uh, uh, you know, on each query, it's at most log n. Uh, and of course, uh, we cannot do n, n square processing either. Uh, otherwise, you just do a brute force, uh, n square processing, and then for each one, um, you know, store all the possibilities, which is n square. It takes n square time, it takes n square space, which is both of which I don't, we don't have. Um, so what I did in instead is, I mean, this looks a little bit weird, and it is the first time I've written this, so I am trying, maybe later we'll try to figure out how to uh, practice this. But basically, the, the thing that I was thinking is, well, like I said, we need log n, right? And here we can do n log n. So what, what is the way to do n log n? Well, uh, the way to do n log n for me was just to break it down so that instead of, you know, to, so the naive way would be like, okay, for each node, let's store its parent, its grandparent, its third uh, ancestor, its fourth ancestor, and so forth. So what I did instead was I was um, thinking about, okay, so the way to do it to save space and time is to store every uh, power of two instead. Uh, so this is, I forget what the name for this. So sorry if I, maybe I'll leave in the comments or if you know, leave in the comments. But basically, uh, we represent all the distance from, so it's, uh, you know, for each node, you store the distance that's one away, two away, four away, five away, oh, sorry, four away, eight away, 16 away, 32 away, and so forth, powers of twos, right? So because it's powers of two, you know that you're going to get log n of them, where n is, um, at most in this case, is n, which is the size of the input. Uh, so that's how I, I saw, uh, create this thing. Uh, it turned out that if you thought about it that way, uh, it becomes a little bit of dynamic programming because, I mean, that's the way that I have it kind of win. And I actually didn't think about this as I was writing it, but it becomes dynamic programming because, um, you know, if, you now how do I get, um, you know, let's say, uh, let's say I have a given node and I want to get the, uh, the fourth ancestor. Well, the fourth ancestor is just my second, um, my my grand uh, my grandparent, which is my second ancestor, and my second ancestor's second ancestor, right? So in a way, you add them together. Um, so, and how do you get? Um, and then similarly to get the eighth ancestor, that's just your fourth ancestor's fourth ancestor, right? So that's how I did this uh, loop and this change away uh, to kind of construct that. And then the lookup is just the reverse of that, um, where uh, I take the biggest power of two, and then I take the biggest power of two to, uh, so basically if like, let's say we have given a, fifth, a random number, like 15. Uh, well, 15, the biggest power of two that go, that's under 15 is eight, right? So then that means we go eight, and then we go seven, and then, oh, sorry, we go eight, then we go four, then we go two, then we go one to add up to 15. And that's uh, basically what this out, uh, code does. And and you could prove that it is uh, log n time because you, you divide it by two effectively at every step, right? So, uh, or log k that is uh, in this case. So, 
So what is the complexity of this algorithm now that we have this algorithm? Um, well, the pre-processing is going to be n log n because you have, you're given n numbers and this one's at, at most log n times um, because every time you're doubling, right? Uh, so it's going to double your distance. Uh, get cave ancestor. This is, uh, we, we get Q number of queries of them. So this one's in total Q times log K times uh, for the... Um, for the queries. Uh, and in space, this, well, we didn't have to do this recursively. And if you didn't do it recursively, then this is all of one space. Um, but I did it recursively, so you could have to count the stack space, which is log k. Uh, and here, just for the, the cache, it is n log n because, um, you know, you have n of these first index and you have log n of the second index. 